Hey Blink, it's dangerous to go alone, take this. I keep it close. Always. Hey guys, welcome back to the experience. And today we're doing a little bit of rant on CHL mindset. So more or less, why do you carry a gun? I think most people can identify that they have a need for self-defense and they probably own firearms, but a lot of people I know and a couple of them that are my homies and I love and I've been giving them shit for years about this. So don't take it personal. Why do you carry a gun? Okay, you have a CHL, you got a holster, but you don't carry your gun. Why? What's the point? Obviously, you understood the need for self-defense because unless you bought all, all, unless all of your firearms are for hunting or plinking, you probably have some that are for serious use. You should be carrying a gun on you every day. Personal opinion. But Taylor, my employer won't allow me to carry at work. That's okay. You don't have to carry it the rest of the time then, I guess. But on the flip side, at least in Texas, you're able to store it in your vehicle at work um, per state law, even if they don't allow the guns in the premises, you're still allowed to keep it in your vehicle in st per state law. But a lot of the frustration in this rant is really coming from, there's a lot of folks out there that have a gun and they even carry it, maybe they even carry it regularly, but what is their mindset in approaching the gun, right? Why are you actually carrying a firearm from the base root of the need for self-defense? Right, because it is your responsibility to defend yourself. Exactly. And so a lot of times I encounter people that, well, let's just use a reference from one of our homies. He took a CHL class this week recently. Um, he just moved to Texas. So he was in a CHL class. And in this class, they're talking about carrying a firearm every day, getting used to that, and then talking about fight or flight. And in some cases that it's not going to be ideal for you as C Mr. CCW to go uh, responding to the active shooter that's on the other side of Walmart, right? If he's Close and imminent and incredible. Okay, well, that's a different context. But you as a CHL carrier, right? The idea that you are going to respond in the same way that law enforcement is, I don't feel like it's realistic. Most likely- I wouldn't you're, recommend it. Yeah, most likely it's not gonna go well. And in all reality, most of the time the law enforcement gets there, it is to draw chalk lines and collect evidence. A lot of the time, right. things have already finished happening by the time they're there. I mean, if, if you pull your weapon and stay where you are to defend yourself and your loved ones, that would be defense. If you go tracking someone down, pretty sure that would be offense. And there's lots of legal uh, rabbit holes to go down on that one. But really though, we carry a gun for defense. Obviously there's certain situations where maybe it is going to be the best choice for you to actually engage an active shooter. Again, I'm not here to game that with you. There's a lot of people on the internet in places like Reddit that would love to discuss that. But if you have a CHL and you have a firearm and you do carry it sometimes, trying to approach that from the actual mindset that I feel like at least personal opinion you should be having is, hey, I'm here to save life. That is why I have a firearm because I value life and I want to protect it. Obviously, we don't have the same ROE as law enforcement with qualified immunity or the government with uh, kill, kill everyone on the OBJ uh, immunity. Which so, is a good policy in some situations. In some situations, But not is. ours. But not ours, exactly. We're everyday dirty citizens. We're the normal dudes. So we carry a firearm to defend those and who we love. And having the mindset, just like we'll talk about situational awareness and printing and being present in public, the mindset is the foundation of that food pyramid to approach your concealed carry from. I carry a gun because I want to defend life. I need to be proficient with what I carry because it shouldn't be a free loot drop. It should be a tool. Proficiency. One of the things that absolutely gets on my nerves, and I do hear this, and it makes my skin crawl, yeah. is, well, I have a pistol. I have a holster. I took the class and I passed. I'm good. Yep. I don't need to go to the range. People invite you to go to the range to train because they want you to be efficient in your tasks and your skills with your self-defense weapon. At least we do. Maybe your homies invite you to shoot trash. That's cool too. So if Blinking's you look fun. someone dead in the face and say, oh, I passed the class, I'm good. And you took the class five years ago, don't trust your own skills. You Got need it. to go practice. It's, it's just like everything. It's a perishable skill. Yep. It's a perishable skill. If you don't get off your ass and go do it, you, you shouldn't have any confidence in your ability to do so. 100%. The dude that runs my church safety team, he's a nice guy, I like him a lot. But recently, 
he made a comment when we were talking about safety scenarios at church in the sense of, oh, well, it's good enough for the kind of shooting we're going to be doing. It was like, the kind of shooting we're going to be doing? You mean moving in a dynamic environment without a very good backstop with the potential for a million things in the way between you and what needs to get shot? And that's what sets me off is how is, oh, that, how yes. is that individual going to reliably place shots in a high stress environment and not clip wing or kill people that he doesn't intend to. Yeah. That type of person is the person who needs to be designated to go your ass in the hallway and call 911 and let people who actually train and have confidence in their skills protect the people who need protecting. I completely agree. Again, it starts with the mindset. It goes into the tools and the training afterwards. But if you're approaching it from the, I don't have no flight response. I'm just going to fight it. Like, cool, bro. You may get shot by the cops when they show up. Good for you. I hope that doesn't happen. Exactly. If you have that mindset and attitude and you're not training with your weapon, leave that shit in the safe because you're going to get yourself and other people hurt. And someone might accuse you of doing suicide by cop because they're going to bust your ass. You have a responsibility to self-defense, personal opinion. You have a responsibility to those around you that you are not a chode that can't shoot and you carry a gun anyway. Granted, everyone's at different levels of their firearms journey. Everyone's at different skill levels. We're not beating anybody up here because they're a new gun owner or a new shooter. But if you've been carrying a gun for 10 years, I expect you to be able to hit a target at 25 yards. Right. A silhouette sized IDPA will say target. I expect exactly. you to be able to hit the A zone or pretty close. Sorry, the zero down zone, not the A zone. USPSA. Yeah, uh. The bullseye dog. Yes. Hit the target, eight inch circle, 25 yards. I feel like you should be able to do that. I feel like that's a little further than most self-defense scenarios are going to occur, right? Most things that, I don't know if this is still a rule that's actual or not, but I read on a blog that I love to read, it's like three rounds and three seconds at three yards, right? And that's defensive shooting. So, so can you actually present your gun, point shoot or not point shoot, present the gun, acquire a side picture, get three good rounds while you're moving, while something's happening, maybe you have both hands available, Hopefully you have a loaded gun and you're not carrying on an empty chamber because if you are, you're a disgrace. That's right. Okay. So in, in closing, that I'll happened. leave you with this. How much is a box of 59 mil rounds? Estimate. Know. Estimate. 12, 13 bucks. So if you can't spend 12, 13 dollars once a month on a box of 50 and go spend that at the range, stop drinking your coffee. Or sodas. Hell no. Or sodas is a good example. The coffee, you need to keep the coffee. <laughs> so where can they find us, bro? <laughs> So you can find us on Instagram at Spicy Snafu. You can also find us on YouTube at Spicy Snafu. If you're on YouTube now, which you are because we're filming this for YouTube, we appreciate you. Seriously, it's huge, huge to us to have such a wonderful response and a lot of feedback from folks. We do want to hear what you're thinking. We want to hear if you want to call us stupid and tell us why we're wrong. That's cool. We'd love to be able to actually have that discussion in the comments. Right. Tell us why you do or don't carry a gun. And for the love of God, don't carry in an empty chamber. Don't be that guy. We're not Israeli carrying. It's not 1946. Just carry a modern firearm with a drop safety that you can carry safely. And until next time. Be safe in all you do. Stay spicy and carry your gun. Train. Train.